Sorafagonax. Now, that isn't necessarily a name that comes to mind when most people think about dinosaurs, but if you know anything about dinosaurs, then you know that Sorafagonax was an absolute monster, very deserved of his name, Lord of the Lizard Eaters. Now, Sorafagonax is believed to have been the largest predator of the late Jurassic, and it lived in North America, more specifically the Morrison Formation. And in doing some research as of late, it is difficult to understand just how big this animal is. There are some giant estimates for it that put it at upwards of eight tons in weight. Now, I do want to specify that that's not necessarily clarified yet and published, but there are some folks that believe that this animal could have, in fact, been that big. Seems like more composed estimates put it at about three to maybe four, maybe even five tons in weight. Still an enormous predator, potentially stretching 35 to 36 feet in length. It was a whopper of an animal with big thumb claws. I'm going to put some links and descriptions in the description section and the comment section down below. If you haven't seen some of the images online of this animal, then you're in for a real treat. The thumb claw was absolutely massive at about 26.3 centimeters in length, very thick, very robust, and it gives the overall impression that this may have been a sauropod hunter. Now, we do know that even big predatory dinosaurs, it may have been not believable to think they would have taken down giant sauropods. And Sauropagonax did live in the same environment as some real giants, Apatosaurus, Diplodocus, Amphicelius. There are some big ones that it potentially shared its habitat with. I'm assuming it must have harassed them. If definitely not the adults, then the juveniles and potentially sick of the species. Because when you take a look at the thumb claw, again, take a look down in the comments section down below for the link that I put there. When you take a look at the thumb claw, you get an idea of the devastation that Sorafagonax may have been capable of. And a lot of people online that have actually reviewed and analyzed its bones call it the most impressive claw in all of the dinosaur kingdom. Now, that's probably up for debate depending upon who you ask, but it is a massive thumb claw nonetheless. And it wasn't until looking at pictures a few years ago that I really started to comprehend just how mighty of an animal this must have been. And it lived in the late, in the late Jurassic. You know, I think most of the time when we think of giant theropods, we think of, you know, T-Rex, late, late Cretaceous, Spinosaurus, 100 million years ago, Carcharodontosaurus, about 100 million years ago, Giganotosaurus, about 100 million years ago. But Sorafagonax was living over 150 million years ago. So it's pretty fascinating to think of such a giant predator stalking prey. And again, to me, it's really this thumb claw that really hits home just how big this animal was, just how imposing this animal was, and just how terrifying this animal would have been if you lived in the same environment with it. If you were a baby juvenile sauropod, this would have been your worst nightmare. See the thing coming around? Would have been your worst nightmare. It was a big animal. And in the coming months and years, I'll really be curious to see if more information is published on it. Be curious to see what the upper size ranges are for it. I have had a few discussions on Twitter with some people who are telling me that this species could potentially get up to eight tons in weight. Now, again, very speculative at this point in time, but that is a staggering number. If that, if that eight ton number turns out to in fact be true, then we're talking about something that was as big as some T-Rex species. Now, we know that T-Rex got upwards of 10 tons, so I'm not going to say this animal would have approached the size of T-Rex, but we're looking at a whopper of an animal. Eight tons would put it at about the size of Giganotosaurus. So again, really fascinating and interesting stuff. I'll be sure to keep everybody posted and updated if I hear anything about this, but it will be cool to see in the coming years if we can get some type of verification on just how big this animal was. Now, as always, the fossil record is incomplete, and a lot of times scientists make estimates based off of a femur or a tibia, and they compare it to other animals that were the same size. So I'm assuming that's what they're doing here, but it'd be really cool to see if they can uncover more of this beast and really let us know how big it would have been. It's also important to note that, you know, some of these species, we, we may never know for certain how big some of them got because we're only looking at such a small sample size. So I always assume that if we say an animal weighed five tons and that seems to be what the 
average species would have weighed based on however many specimens have been found, I always just assume that there would have been a bigger one out there. There's probably something bigger. Chances are we have not found the biggest. So once again, Sorphagonax, Late Jurassic, Morrison Formation. This thing would have been a monster. Let me know in the comments section down below, had you ever heard of Sorophagonax? Do you know a lot about it or is it kind of an unknown dinosaur? Because to me, Sorophagonax is really one of the reasons why I publish Prehistoric Magazine to tell the stories that have yet to be told about animals that have not gotten the attention that they so rightfully deserve. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Take care.